Hello, I'm Scott Vaughn. In this video, I'll introduce the game Kerbal Space Program and a lab workbook on writing inspired by the game as fun ways to teach and learn math, physics, astronomy, and engineering. In the game Kerbal Space Program, or KSP, players build rockets and airplanes and all kinds of other stuff and can fly anywhere in an entire solar system which accurately models Newtonian physics. It's based on precisely the same principles found in math, physics, astronomy, and engineering classes in textbooks from middle school up through undergraduate college level courses. I'm calling my lab workbook, inspired by the game KSP, the Kerbal Math and Physics Lab. For most of us, rocket science probably seems way too complicated and intimidating to learn, and understanding it might seem completely out of reach. Maybe the math seems too complicated. Maybe you don't have the training for a job at NASA. Or maybe building a rocket is just not in your current budget. Nevertheless, with KSP, you really can play along at home or at school. And with the game, you can jump into the past, the present, and the future of the space industry, finding your own solutions to the same questions and problems that mathematicians, physicists, astronomers, and rocket scientists of the past, present, and future have solved or will need to solve. I want to emphasize that many of the questions I include in my lab workbook don't require access to the game. In many cases, the game provides a supplementary illustration of the math and physics. And I want to emphasize that ultimately my goal with this lab workbook is to illustrate the universality of mathematics. That is, how the same math and physics principles and formulas apply anywhere in the universe and how they would apply perfectly in the Kerbal system if it actually did exist somewhere out there in the real universe. The principles and formulas students learn in school are universal and true, for example, whether we substitute the mass of the Earth or the mass of the planet Kerbin into our calculations. The lessons and exercises I've written in this workbook could be used in schools in a lab component, component to a traditional math or physics class. I'm imagining students in a computer lab playing Kerbal, exploring and answering questions in the workbook and having a lot of fun learning. Or maybe the lab work is done by students at home on their own computer. And this doesn't really have to be used as a lab. There are examples and questions in this workbook that instructors could just add into lectures or homework sets or exams in both math and physics classes at all levels from middle school to first and second year college level as fun and real life applications of math and physics. Also, my lab workbook, along with the game, provide activities for math, physics, and engineering clubs at many different math skill levels. The lab workbook material is divided by the level of math required in the exercises, from algebra to differential equations, including pre-calc, trigonometry, and single and multivariable calculus. Now, the game itself does take some time to learn, but as an educator, I think it's worth exploring as a teaching tool. KSP offers a really new venue for creativity and experimentation in math, physics, and engineering in a way that isn't possible in real life. That's because it's truly a simulation, not just a game, where students build and fly airplanes, rockets, satellites, rovers, space stations, navigate and survey distant planets and moons, mine asteroids, and perform science experiments, just as they might in a real lab. This requires learning real science and orbital mechanics, and a lab workbook based on the game can guide students through the academics of what they are learning in the game. I teach math at a community college in Pennsylvania, and I've already created some video lessons for calculus and differential equations that I've posted here on YouTube, and I've included those lessons, examples, and questions in my lab workbook. Here's some of what I've done so far. Example topics for which I've recorded videos already and topics that are included already in the Kerbal Math and Physics Lab. There's a video series I created called the Kerbal Guide to Navigation, Parts 1 and 2. Personally, I learned a lot about how airplanes and ships navigate on Earth playing Kerbal Space Program. I now truly understand the difference between Great Circle and Rum Line Navigation, and I included this in the videos. In these videos, I derive and use formulas for determining the initial bearing for the shortest path between two points on any size planet or moon. These calculations can be confirmed for navigation on Earth using common flight planning software available free online. These formulas work for navigation on Earth, but also for navigating on the moon 
and Mars or any other planet or moon. That includes made-up worlds like on Kerbin or Duna in KSP. I love the irony that flying to see a UFO buried in the ice at Kerbin's North Pole in a game provided a reality check for me on my own understanding of spherical geometry and navigation in real life. There are examples of navigation on Earth, on Earth's moon, and on Kerbin in my lab workbook. In another video, and in my workbook, I created a lesson on solving a differential equation using Euler's method to model a rocket's speed during launch. That equation is sophisticated enough to include gravity, the rocket's thrust, its decreasing mass, and increasing nonlinear air resistance. After modeling the launch using Mathematica in Wolfram Programming Lab, I also used the TI calculator and Excel to, est to estimate the rocket's height based on its speed. And then check all those calculations in the KSP game. Students can follow these calculations in the workbook and experiment by launching their own rockets in KSP, just as one might experiment in a real lab. In my lab workbook and in corresponding videos on YouTube, I use Desmos and GeoGebra to analyze a trip to Kerbin's nearest moon, called the MUN. In the process, I use the game to confirm Kepler's laws of planetary motion, study elliptical orbits, compute the pitch of the spacecraft during flight, calculate escape velocity, and calculate the mass of Kerbin's moon, called the MUN, a calculation based on data collected while in orbit. As I did that, I, it really struck me as a perfect lab activity. It was really fun to check these calculations in a simulation game, as opposed to just Googling to see if I had the right answer for a similar trip from the Earth to the Moon, something which I could have only watched in a video or read about. With KSP, there's more interaction with the math and physics theory, more than just solving an equation and checking the answer at the back of the book or on Google. KSP provides a perfect environment for lab activities, providing a kind of hands-on experience for the student that might wonder, how could anyone actually measure the mass of the Earth or the Moon or the Sun? Or what's the difference between mean, true, and eccentric anomaly? Or how do you determine the launch window for an interplanetary mission or land and navigate on another planet? With KSP and my lab workbook, students can be engaged in asking and answering those questions themselves beyond just reading about it, listening to a lecture, or watching a video. Students can explore the answers for themselves. In another video and in my lab exercises in the workbook, I solve Kepler's equation with Newton's method, using Desmos, GeoGebra, Excel, and Kerbal Space Program to illustrate and confirm those calculations. I use those principles to confirm mean, true, and eccentric anomaly for a flight in KSP, and then use those same principles to confirm real-life data downloaded from NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory, data which I could then use to plot the position of the Tesla Roadster launched by SpaceX in 2018. Students using KSP and the Kerbal Math and Physics Labs can recreate and explore those calculations and principles for themselves. They could even build a Tesla Roadster, put it on a Falcon Heavy, and launch it for themselves. Another example my workbook uses the principles of logarithms to illustrate and analyze Kepler's third law of planetary motion. However, instead of just using the same routine examples based on the planets of our own solar system, Examples that students will always see in their astronomy and physics courses, I use the planets of the Kerbal system to illustrate those same principles. So not only are students engaged with fundamental mathematical principles and applications of logarithms, not only are they applying those principles to understand physics and astronomy, and, and not only are students engaging actively with software that simulates the planetary motion. With KSP and my Kerbal Math and Physics Lab, Students are experiencing the universality of math and physics, that is, exploring fundamental general principles that work for any planetary system anywhere in the universe, even those planetary systems that have not yet been discovered and perhaps could someday in some distant system be like the ones in KSP. So I'll conclude with a little more about the KSP game. As of this recording, the current version of Kerbal Space Program is 1.8, and a major update is advertised for some time in 2020. You can find the game at KerbalSpaceProgram.com and on the gaming site Steam. There's also an education version of the game called Kerbal EDU, available at TeacherGaming.com. 
currently based on one point, version 1 1.4 of the standard game. One thing I found particularly useful with the education version is how easily it exports flight data to Excel. It's very useful for lab activities. There are also two expansion packs for the standard game available from the publisher squad and on Steam that add historical American and Soviet rockets and parts, mission objectives, additional engineering tools, robotic parts, and additional science gathering abilities. And then there are all the mods and crafts files created by an enormous community of players and programmers. Mods are free downloadable extensions that add features like visual enhancements, additional flight data and tools. The website Kerbal X hosts player created craft files. For example, here's a Saturn V and a Falcon Heavy, and here's the SpaceX Starship, and there's this and that. This is so much fun because you're only limited by your imagination and, well, by the laws of physics. And there are a lot of other YouTube creators I should mention, like Scott Manley, that have created educational material inspired by KSP. I'll put links to those creators' channels in the description below. Also check out the Kerbal Wiki for lots of tutorials on how to play and lots of scientific data about the Kerbal system. I'll also include a link to my workbook in its current form in the description below. So finally, this game and the workbook I'm writing really create a playground for math and physics students to learn and experience real math, physics, astronomy, engineering, and rocket science. With this game and my workbook, students can build their own engineering designs, test their own ideas, learn and experience real rocket science, and they can find their own solutions and test their own answers to the same questions and problems that astronomers and rocket scientists have faced in the past, are dealing with right now, and will face in the future. So thanks for watching and thanks for your interest in Kerbal Space Program and the Kerbal Math and Physics Lab.